I knew the words of Sarah Kane um, already. I knew her work, um, but uh, I think it took a while for me to realise that um, it was the text that I wanted to use to make my first opera. Thorazine, 100 milligrams, slept, karma. I love uh, Sarah Kane's text because it's really, really formalised in 24 very clear scenes. Um, the structure is, um, yeah, very formal, very rigorous. There is a massive uh, range of different kinds of text in it, from very poetic text to these very simple conversations between a doctor and a patient, to these kind of abstract conceptual lists of numbers. Um, there's a huge range of different text in there, which I think really makes it suitable to um, adaptation with music. Circularly, 50 milligrams. Insomnia worsened. Severe anxiety, anorexia, weight loss, 17 kilograms. The text is incredibly musical. She writes some text in a kind of song form, a kind of poetic song form. There are lots of references to music. A lot of it is, is monologue text. There's very little dialogue text in the piece. So again, it suits itself to opera, um, to setting, to music, to this kind of inner, inner voices, inner monologue, inner world. <laughs> I think when approaching this text, um, two of the main things that I wanted to, to make sure we achieved was to stay very much in the inside mind. So we have these six singers that, that really represent just one character and the, the many different polyphonic voices that you might have in your head. So that was the first thing, to not represent a kind of external reality. And the second thing, kind of related, was to break this traditional um, link between character and performer. So no one performer is playing a fixed role um, throughout the piece. I have resigned myself to death this year. Sartre will call this self-indulgence. They are lucky not to know its truth. Some will know the simple fact of pain. In my previous work, or in my work more generally, um, I'm very interested in the mix between theatre and opera. Mo most of my work contains a lot of spoken text in it, so I wanted to work with a theatrical text. And also I have for a long time been very interested in themes to do with kind of violence and structural violence, um, politics and, and political violence in a way. So, and I have tended towards darker themes, and her text and her work more generally covers exactly that ground. Um, it is, it, it, it talks about violence, talks about gender, and, and is quite political. Patient discharged into the care of the community on arrival of acutely psychotic patient in emergency clinic in greater need of a hospital bed. When I was writing this opera, actually, one of the best pieces of advice um, I was given was, well, you want people to come out of this and say, well, that wasn't an opera. So, <laughs> and I, I, I kind of, stuck to that idea. So, um, of course, there is a lot of operatic, traditional operatic singing in it, um, quite expressionistic, but also there's lots of spoken text, there's lots of visually projected text, there's lots of extended vocal technique, um, more theatrical effects like um, breathing effects, um, that kind of thing. So I wanted to have, yeah, a very wide expressive palette and, and have a good mix with theatre and opera. One inspiration I took, uh, which I used for the patient-doctor dialogue scenes, there's about five patient-doctor dialogue scenes in the piece, and it's the only dialogue in the play. Um, and I saw this piece actually in um, in Berghain in Berlin by Ignaz Kunglevicius, which was um, a kind of installation with percussion and projection, and I found it really inspiring. And I, um, I kind of adapted some of those ideas in this. So these dialogues in the Kane text are played just by percu two percussionists, one representing the doctor, one the patient, and the words are just projected um, as they play the speech rhythms of the, of the dialogue. <laughs> Feel 
448 Psychosis is basically a, a theatre text about depression um, and about one person's experience of depression and suicidal thoughts. Diagnosis. Pathological grief. But in that, it covers ideas of love, of happiness, of searching for love and not finding it. It's a very human story. It touches on experiences that we all have, not just people who suffer from depression. So yeah, it's, it's quite a, a human, touching, dark story. It is a tragic piece, but I think it touches on themes which are common to all of us, um, such as love, happiness, what it means to be happy and what makes us happy. Um, and uh, whether that happiness or that the things which make us happy come from within or come from outside. Um, and it's about that search, really. The musical style, my musical style generally, is quite eclectic. So, like I was saying, that there's a big range of different texts in Sarah Kane's uh, piece. There is a big range of music in the in the opera adaptation. So um, there's kind of a circus waltz, there's um, like a kind of pseudo computer game music, there's very expressionist um, classical style music, there's references to um, Purcell or Baroque um, laments, there's some little bits of Bach, uh, there's some electronic music as well. There's a whole range of different kinds of um, styles and references in there. Collaboration is really important for me. Um, this was a close collaboration. This was the first close collaboration I did with the director, Ted Hoffman, who directed the premiere production in London. And since then, we've made seven pieces together and we are working on more together. Um, so 448 Psychosis was, yeah, the first, the first time that that collaboration came together. More generally, it's very important for me to collaborate um, in the rehearsal room. So I was there for all the rehearsals and worked very closely with the music director, Richard Baker, with the director, Ted Hoffman, and with the cast to, to kind of build the piece in the rehearsal room. <laughs> I think this, it will be interesting to see this in concert performance. It's the first time that um, that's been done for this piece. There is a lot of video in the piece and kind of lighting effects, which we will have in this um, production are very important. But I suppose it will feel a bit more like a staged oratorio or something like that, uh, or a concert performance of an oratorio, which I think is really interesting. I've never worked with uh, Ensemble Lins Contemporain before, but it's really exciting. Of course, they are world famous. Um, and um, it's, yeah, it's, it's wonderful to, to have the first time opportunity to, to work with them and, and with Matthias, of course. <laughs>